So what can be done? What is the federal government prepared to do to stem this tide of gun violence? Joining me now from Toronto is Toronto Danforth Liberal MP Julie DeBruzen. Hi there. Thanks very much for being with us. I appreciate it. Oh, hi. Thank you for having me. So I want to start off, of course, just by asking for your reaction, uh, what your day has been like. I know you've been in the community meeting with people. Uh, what have they been telling you? Yeah, well, it's been a really difficult day. So this morning I... I walked up from my home, I just live off of the day and forth myself, and uh, started talking with people in the community about what they were thinking about. And uh, what I've heard is, I heard a lot of concern about the victims. People were concerned for, for safety on the, on the Danforth. The Danforth is a bit of our public meeting space for people in the community, and so it's very important for us to make sure that it remains a safe space that we can all enjoy. Um, and another thing I heard a lot about is gratitude for our first responders. And, and when I say that, not even just um, the professional first responders, but so many people, individuals who stepped up. Um, and I know that many people have shared stories about the woman in the tattoo parlor, mm -hmm. but talking about you know, individuals taking very strong actions to help other people in the community. And, and one last thing that really has come through is the need for us to come together. And, and to find a way to heal and, and then to retake the Danforth and, and make it our own again. It's an amazing community, I know as well. I grew up there. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I have to ask you, though, about, about of course, the, 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 the prospect for solutions and the idea of there being a greater problem than, this, than just this one incident. Do you think there is no. sort of a, a wider issue here, a, a bigger problem at hand? Well, it, it's really hard in the context of this this incident because we're just too early in the investigation to know exactly you know what what were were the factors in it. So we're going to have to wait as the investigation unfolds. But but there's no question that it's it's much more than a single solution that's going to be needed to meet meet this issue about firearms violence. Do you think there is a problem with gun violence in Toronto right now, though? Well, <laughs> after you know. After what I've seen on my street um, and, and what people are feeling, I, how, how, how can we even doubt that? Like, of course. Um, the, the, as far as solutions go, our, the, a, one city councillor, Paula Fletcher, and, e, and even John Tory ha, today have been talking about doing something about guns, and, and specifically the idea of banning handguns in Toronto. What is your position on that? Are you open to it? Yeah, so it's interesting. I'm, I'm a member of the Public Safety National Security Committee, so I just had the chance to study and work on Bill C-71, which passed through the House, which is gun control legislation. And so had a chance to hear from experts about the different factors. And there's a whole lot within that statute about enhanced background checks as well. So right now, under the current situation, under the current system, you only go back five years. But with a new legislation, we would go back as a lifetime to, to look at someone's history before uh, issuing a firearms legislation or a firearms uh, ability to buy, get one for a license. And then the other piece is also the fact that we've enhanced what you're going to consider as what are the criteria. So, for example, if someone has a history of violence and a mental illness, that's now being added as a criteria to be considered as part of of the verification process. So. There are steps within that legislation, but it isn't even just within that legislation. We have to look beyond it at different things as well. So, for example, um, in Budget 2018, there was a commitment to uh, invest in giving more funds to the CBSA to have more ability to prevent guns from coming across the border. And, and that's an important thing that I hear about all the time. People are concerned about that. So that's one way also to get guns off our streets and to give funding as well to the RCMP so that they can track and seize firearms uh, that are there illegally. Because, again, we want to make sure that we keep guns off our streets. We want to make sure that they don't end up in the wrong hands. I want to point out, that in this case, we don't know, of course, if that gun was obtained legally or, or illegally. Oh, absolutely. Um, but, That's, but I see, yeah. I understand what you're saying in the legislation. I'm asking beyond the legislation, though, and I'm, I'm going to play for you a clip of the mayor from earlier today mm -hmm. and ask you um, specifically for, for what he's talking about. Mm. Have a listen. There are far too many people carrying around guns in our city and our region who should not have them. You've heard me ask the question of why anybody would need to buy 10 or 20 guns, which they can lawfully do under the present laws. And that leads to another question we need to discuss. Why does anyone in this city need to have a gun at all? 
So he's speaking specifically about uh, about guns and, and, and whether anyone in Toronto even needs one other than, than the police. Do you agree with what he's saying? Well, I, I think he raises a point. I, you know, I, I don't know why anyone would need a handgun, and I don't understand why they, you know, we would need that in the city of Toronto, I'm, uh, excluding from that when I'm talking about our police, but I, I don't see why we would need that. And additionally, um, he raised a part about the number of guns, and one of the things that I was particularly interested in when we were studying the Bill C-71 legislation, and I brought a motion about that, was to study straw, straw purchases because more the concern is now domestic guns are being purchased legally and then being put onto the illegal market. So he raises a strong point. I actually brought a motion specifically on that issue about how we can uh, verify that and make sure that we stop that from happening. Is the federal government open to something like uh, an all-out ban, though, uh, on handguns in, in an area as specific as Toronto? Um, I don't even know how that would look, and I can't speak for the government on that. I just can't. Uh, I can't understand myself as someone who has seen what we just saw last night, where, where the need is to have, have guns on our streets, and I will do what I can certainly to work with our government, work with other orders of government to make sure that we have our streets to be safe again from gun violence. Okay, thank you so much for your time, Mr. Bruzen. I really appreciate it. Thank you.